This video will show you how to draw Lewis diagrams for neutral atoms and for positive and negative ions. Lewis diagrams were developed by chemist Gilbert Newton Lewis, who discovered covalent bonding and contributed greatly to our knowledge of bonding and other chemistry topics. Lewis diagrams are also called Lewis structures or electron dot diagrams. In a Lewis diagram of an atom, the symbol of the element is shown and only the valence electrons are shown. This is different from a Bohr diagram where all of the electrons are shown. The valence electrons are shown as dots written around the symbol. Let's go back to the Bohr diagrams for a moment. Remember, this is the Bohr diagram for nitrogen. You can see that a nitrogen atom has seven electrons altogether. The valent shell is the outermost occupied shell. In nitrogen's case, it is shell number two. The valence electrons are the electrons that inhabit the valence shell. We can see that nitrogen has five valence electrons. Here's another example, a neutral atom of sulfur, element number 16, which has a total of 16 electrons. It has six valence electrons, the six electrons shown in pink in shell number three, the valence shell of sulfur. Here's an easy way to find the number of valence electrons in an atom. Elements in the same vertical column or group on the periodic table have the same number of valence electrons. For example, all of the elements in group 1 have one valence electron, and all of the elements in group 2 have two valence electrons. Notice that for groups 13 to 17, the number of valence electrons is the same as the last digit in the group number. For example, the last digit in 13 is 3 and all of the elements in group 13 have three valence electrons. The last digit in 16 is six, and all of the elements in group 16 have six valence electrons. Also notice in group 18 that helium has two valence electrons. That's all the electrons helium has. The rest of the elements in group 18 have eight valence electrons. So from now on, if you have a periodic table, you can find the number of valence electrons in all of these atoms. You may have been wondering about the elements in the middle section of the periodic table. In Science 10, we don't consider the valence electrons of elements in groups 3 to 12. These are called transition metals. The way electrons behave in these elements is too complex for the model that we're using. And we're not asked to write Lewis diagrams for these elements either, so we'll leave them out in the rest of our discussion of Lewis diagrams. When adding dots to represent valence electrons in atoms, start with an imaginary north-south-east-west cross, as shown here. We'll start with the elements in period 2, lithium to neon. Lithium, a group 1 element, has one valence electron. We could add the dot to any of the four lines, north, south, east, or west. So putting it here would be correct. Putting it here would also be correct, or here, or here. All four of these positions are equally correct. We'll leave it at this position for now. Now we'll move to beryllium, which is in group two and has two valence electrons. Valence electrons are usually added to beryllium at right angles to each other, for example, like this, or this, or this, or this. But some texts show beryllium's two valence electrons on a straight line like this. This is also acceptable for beryllium, but we'll use this arrangement here. Now we'll move on to boron, which is in group three and has three valence electrons. These three valence electrons are usually added to form a triangle like this. Now we'll move on to carbon, which is in group 14 and has four valence electrons. One electron is added to each line of the cross like this. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. At this point, electrons start pairing up. Nitrogen has one pair, in this case shown on top, and three unpaired electrons on the other lines of the cross, and all are right angles to each other. A pair of electrons in the Lewis diagram for an atom is called a lone pair. A nitrogen atom has one lone pair. This is one correct way of writing the Lewis diagram for nitrogen, but the lone pair does not have to be on the top. It could be at any of the positions. For example, the lone pair could be on the left side like this, and it's still correct. Or it could be on the bottom like this. Or it could be on the right side like this. We'll leave it this way. Now we'll do oxygen. 
It is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. To fit six electrons around the symbol, we need to have two lone pairs and two unpaired electrons. They can be arranged like this. Notice the two lone pairs are at right angles to each other, and the two unpaired electrons are also at right angles to each other. Another correct way is this, with one lone pair on the left side and one lone pair on the bottom. The two lone pairs are still at right angles to each other. This is also correct. One lone pair is on the top and one is on the right side. In all of these ways we've done for oxygen so far, the lone pairs have been at right angles to each other. Some people show the Lewis diagram for oxygen like this, where the two lone pairs are across from one another. This is not that useful later on when we consider bonding, so we won't use this arrangement for oxygen or any of the other elements in group 16. This is the one we'll use here. Now we'll move on to fluorine, which is in group 17 and has seven valence electrons. A fluorine atom has three lone pairs and one unpaired electron. The unpaired electron can be on the left side like this, or on top like this, or on the right side like this, or on the bottom like this. This is the one that we'll use for fluorine. The last element in period 2 is neon, a noble gas in group 18, with 8 valence electrons. Its Lewis diagram has 4 lone pairs around it like this. Neon has 4 lone pairs of electrons around it. This is called a stable octet. This represents a very stable electron arrangement where the highest occupied shell is completely filled. All noble gases except helium have a Lewis diagram like this. Atoms from groups 14 to 17 gain or share electrons in order to achieve a stable octet like this. Because elements in the same group have the same number of valence electrons, and Lewis diagrams include only valence electrons, we see that elements in period 3 have exactly the same Lewis diagrams as those in period 2. Elements in periods 4, 5, and 6 would also have the same Lewis diagrams. Hydrogen, which is in group 1 and has one valence electron, has the same Lewis diagram as lithium, sodium, and the other elements in group 1. Remember, this single electron could be on any of the lines around the hydrogen atom. It could be on the right, like shown here, or on top, or on the left side, or on the bottom, like this. All of these positions for the valence electron are valid. We'll leave it here for now. Now we'll consider helium. Even though helium has two valence electrons, it is not like the elements in group two, such as beryllium and magnesium. In group two elements, the two valence electrons are not paired. Whereas in helium, the two valence electrons are paired. So the Lewis diagram is shown like this. Helium doesn't have a stable octet like the other group 18 elements. This is because helium only has two electrons. However, its electron arrangement is still stable since it's a noble gas. We can now use this table as a guide for writing Lewis diagrams for any elements we need. These diagrams of individual atoms will be very useful when we create Lewis diagrams for ionic and covalent compounds. We can view it with the crosses like this or without the crosses like this. Now we'll discuss Lewis diagrams for ions. Remember cations or positive ions form when atoms lose electrons and anions or negative ions form when atoms gain electrons. Group 1 elements and group 2 and group 13 elements under beryllium and boron tend to lose their valence electrons to achieve stability. In doing so, they form positive ions or cations. Even though beryllium and boron are metals, and we would expect them to lose electrons and form positive ions, it has been found that these two elements typically share their valence electrons with other atoms to form covalent bonds. The reasons for this are beyond the scope of Science 10. Elements in groups 15, 16, and 17 are able to gain electrons and form negative ions or anions. These elements are also able to share electrons with other elements and form covalent bonds. In some cases they gain electrons and in other cases they share. Remember, they are capable of doing both. 
In fact, all the elements in groups 14 to 17, as well as beryllium, boron, and hydrogen, are able to share electrons with other elements and form covalent bonds. Note that hydrogen can either lose its valence electron or share it. Elements in group 14, as well as beryllium and boron, can only share electrons with other elements. They don't readily gain or lose electrons so they do not form ions at all. We'll start our discussion of ions with some of these elements losing electrons to form positive ions. We'll begin with hydrogen. It has one valence electron, which it can lose to form an H plus ion. Here's the Lewis diagram for a neutral hydrogen atom with one valence electron. Hydrogen will readily lose this electron Since it has lost one electron, but hasn't lost any protons, it has formed an ion with a positive one charge. To show this as a Lewis diagram, we first put square brackets around the symbol. Then we add a plus sign on the top right of the bracket like this. So this is the Lewis diagram for a hydrogen or H plus ion. Here's another example. Magnesium has two valence electrons. So it tends to lose these two electrons and form an ion with a charge of 2 plus. So the magnesium atom will lose these two valence electrons. Because it had lost two electrons, it has now become a positive ion. So we draw square brackets around it like this. And on the top right of the bracket, we add a 2 plus charge. This is the Lewis diagram for a magnesium 2 plus ion. Notice the symbol for magnesium does not have any electrons around it. The magnesium atom had two valence electrons in its highest occupied shell, shell number 3. So we just show electrons from shell number 3 in the Lewis diagram of magnesium. When magnesium formed an ion, it lost both of the electrons in shell 3. So it has none left. We can see that a sodium atom has one valence electron. The sodium atom will readily lose this valence electron and form a sodium plus ion, which has a Lewis diagram like this. And an aluminum atom, which has three valence electrons, will lose these three electrons and form the ion Al3+. This is the Lewis diagram for Al3+. Remember, elements in groups 15, 16, and 17 are able to gain electrons and form negative ions or anions. Let's do phosphorus as an example. We see that phosphorus has three unpaired electrons. In order to achieve a stable octet, a phosphorus atom can readily gain three electrons. So here's a neutral phosphorus atom. We'll watch it as it gains three electrons. And we get this. Notice that phosphorus now has a stable octet. Because it gained three electrons, it is now an ion. So we draw square brackets around it. And because it gained three electrons, it has a charge of three minus, which we write on the top right outside the right bracket. So this is the Lewis diagram for the P3 minus or phosphide ion. This ion is stable because it has a stable octet like the noble gas argon. Looking at oxygen and sulfur in group 16, these each have two unpaired electrons, so they can gain two electrons and form the two minus ions, O2 minus and S2 minus. Here is the Lewis diagram for the O2 minus or oxide anion. And here is the Lewis diagram for the S2 minus or sulfide anion. Looking at fluorine and chlorine in group 17, these each have one unpaired electron, so they can gain one electron and form the minus ions F- and Cl-. Here's the Lewis diagram for F- or the fluoride anion, and here's the Lewis diagram for Cl- or the chloride anion.